ready. Let's just jump into it. It's how I like it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. What's going on, Brittany in pink? Man, it's 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 been a minute. Uh, I'm mean, been a been a minute. A lot of changes. Uh, I've seen a couple of you know a couple of. Uh, I want to say trailers of of what happened to you uh, with your last company. I I see a lot mm-hmm. of big things going on with your with your new endeavor, uh, Midwest uh, Road Rescue. You know you're in yep. you're in you're in my neck of the woods of uh of uh, roadside assistance. So. Uh, Brittany, let's uh, let's let's catch up. So, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about what what happened with uh, RTI. I, I thought it was I thought it was great. I mean, the last time we conversated, it mm-hmm. was you you almost had your you almost paid off your truck and and things was going good. What what happened? Yeah, I think the last we talked, uh, they tossed me over to OTR after I was let go from the dedicated account for nothing I did, just because of the their threats and harassment. They just didn't want the publicity. But I didn't have any freight and didn't know how I was going to make the truck payment. They didn't give me any other option. And they, when I tried to pay them, each week, I was I told him no big deal. We have enough support from the fans, luckily, that we could continue at least short term making that truck payment every week, even if it doesn't move, which is tremendous. Not a lot of drivers have that opportunity. The problem was they said, "Well, we can't do that. We have to deduct it from what you do drive." And that I was just floored. So basically, I was put in a spot where we were going to lose the truck and. I can't really break the news here today, but we have another company that stepped into the rescue. They put our name on the title and they saved the truck for us. A lot's happened, man. <laughs> it's been crazy. <laughs> so you're so it's it's unfortunate that uh that you're still uh getting harassed and 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 stuff like that. Uh we we we've been knowing each other for uh, uh, quite a while. I mean, we don't know each other personally, but from the conversations mm-hmm. that we had, uh, you know, you you became a friend of the show, and every time uh, something happened to you, you always like to come on and share your experience with us, and I do appreciate that. So, uh, yeah, uh, RTI, I mean RTI. So you, so you was dedicated all that time when you was with RTI. Well, I started OTR, coast to coast, and then I I did such a good job for them that they recommended me for a dedicated account that paid two, three times the salary. And so it was great. And I did a wonderful job and did it for several years. And as a matter of fact, the way the whole thing went down was I got a call that congratulated me for being a top performer on the account. And I was like, oh my God, this is great. And then immediately got a call and said, by the way, um, we're going to have to let you go. And I was like, why? And they said, it's because you, you've you been receiving a lot of threats and your truck is a target now. And so we just can't have that. I, it just floored me that somebody could go through that. Um, here's... Uh-huh, go ahead. A lot's happened, man. <laughs> it's been crazy. <laughs> they kind of knew that for years. Uh, you, you've been uh, um, on social media for a uh, quite long time. And you put that out there on your social media the company kind of knew that from the uptake now they want to come and say in 2023 or or 2022 that you're you became a liability exactly why now um now and and to be honest i mean i like to be very transparent about everything rti is saying it's not them that did it if they're saying that it's a dedicated account that saw the videos and the threats and the anger towards me and they pressured RTI said basically, you know, it's the account or her. And unfortunately I've had a lot of people say, you know, why don't you sue them? That's a, that's a hell of a lawsuit. You can't discriminate like that. Well, especially when you didn't do anything, it's these people making threats, but I'm 1099. 
contractor, so I don't fall under the employment regulations. So they can boot you at any time, 1099. That's what happened to me. I just, they saw an out and said, hey, we can reduce our liability. Let's boot her, kick her to the curb. And that's what happened. And I turned to my fans, thankfully, and we pulled together enough money to stall the truck for a little bit and then purchase this SUV and start this brand new company. Talk about turning lemons into lemonade. Let me ask you this before we move on to uh, to to the next part. Um, do you mm-hmm. think uh, do you think that the you know with the freight the way it is now uh, and companies are taking a hit and everything? Do you think that probably had more to do with uh, RTI letting you go? I don't personally think. So. I don't think so so much. I mean, obviously, freight's a factor, but I, I really think that something, something switched at some point. You know, about a year, a year before they booted me here, things got weird. I used to be the brand ambassador, and then they suddenly said, without warning, that, hey, your brand ambassadorship's done. We've decided just to cut it. And this was, mind you, this was after I had helped them build a company page on Facebook and we qualified it for monetization. So it was going to fund their entire ambassador program, bring more women into the industry. I just did this great thing for them. And suddenly it was, hey, uh, we're taking down all the videos. We're deleting the site. And uh, yeah, you're not on it anymore. No explanation. And so things just got weird. So I'm not sure. There's something weird that happened at the company to where I felt like the redheaded stepchild, you know what I mean? Where it's like, we don't talk about her. And I don't know what it was. I I was just talking about, uh, talking about a female driver. Uh, she recently got let go from her company. And, uh, you know, I did a commentary on that. And part of that commentary was me saying about the loyalties that, the drivers would give to these companies only to turn around and just get kicked to the curve by these same companies. That's why, you know, I say, uh, don't give two weeks notice, don't get comfortable and stuff like that. Here you are, uh, you know, gate gave it your all, uh, gave the company a social media presence, uh, and was pretty much loyal to that company uh, for all the years that you that you gave service to it, all the way up until now getting kicked to the curve for, uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I don't know what was the reason on their part, but from the outside looking in, uh, no reason. So, you know, do you think... Uh, now that that happened to you, I, I want to ask you a two-part question. The first part is, uh, did you think that would ever happen to you? And did you go and did you go looking while you was at the company, looking at it as that will never happen to you? There's nothing that you're going to say that's going to make me forget that I love my wife. Is there? Now look. Hmm. I don't, I didn't, I didn't expect that it would happen. I really didn't. I, I thought that once we surpassed 10,000 followers on their Facebook that I was promoting for them at the time that, hey, we just completely paid for the entire ambassador program. Now you're net zero on it. There's no company expense. We can expand our reach. We're doing a great thing. We're raising awareness for breast cancer. There's no way they would give that up. They would have to be suicide. You know, I, I won't say that word. I don't want to get you banned, but you know, <laughs> they have to be self-destructive as a company to be able to do that. And it just floored me. So I'm not sure what went wonky with that, but it it took me by surprise. And then this last round really took me by surprise. I thought never would they do that. This is a I, I won't say the name, but it's a, it's a national retailer that you would notice a major competitor to like Walmart, not Walmart, but one of them. And um, I thought no way in hell would they, they're a very open-minded, inclusive company. You know, there's no way. And it came down to liability for them. Hey, we don't want a massive scene on our hands. If somebody blows their truck up on our site. 
and it's sad. And I don't know what to think about that. I really don't walk out because, you know, what do you do? I understand from a company's perspective, what do you do with a situation like that? At the same time, I've never done anything to these guys. I've literally only got out there to raise awareness for a good thing. So what do you do when somebody's doing the honest thing, becomes a target? Do you start kicking her? Like if I go to the store and I have a bunch of guys following me, protesting and threatening me, are you going to kick me out of the store because of those asshats behind me following me around? You know, that doesn't make sense. I'm I'm definitely sorry that uh, that that situation that happened to you. And again, um, you know, I mean, I, you know, from when from what we talked, you know, I, I thought everything was I thought everything was pretty cool and everything. You you was able to outfit the truck uh, with, you know, with your setup. You you turned your channel into uh, something of a of a reality TV style channel. And uh, and now, um, you know, with that, uh, with that in the rear view, uh, in the rear view mirror, we're looking forward to more content of you doing uh, road work. Uh, <laughs> what, God, I, mean, I love I, it too. I, I uh, you know, that's <laughs> that's where I came from. I I, I came from uh, roadside assistance. I I started uh, my company ERS Lockouts uh, in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. It was it was emerg it was emergency road services. Uh, in Cleveland, Ohio. Is that Ohio. where Walkout Men came from? Yeah, that's where that's that's where my name came from, actually. Um, so cool. Yeah, so you know, I I started uh, started the company. I, I started out with working with uh, with uh, this national uh, lockout company called Papa Lock. Um, they was a franchise. Mm -hmm. I I I I worked uh, up under a franchisee and. I kind of got in there, learned the learned the ways, and and started my uh, started my own little company from there. And uh, and yeah, so where where did the idea uh, for you to jump into roadside assistance? And by the way, I like the car. Thank you. So I was riding with Jordan, my husband, and we were he was door dashing at the time. He he was getting into these gig out things and he's like, you can make a killing and set your own hours. And it's really cool. And so I rode with him. And this is last spring when drama was, you know, and the things were ensuing. I saw the storm clouds gathering with the trucking stuff. And I'm like, so I, I enjoyed riding with him. I was like, something like this would be fun for me, but I need, you know, I'm a past firefighter. You know, I need something more. How do I put it the right way? Life and death, I guess. Um, it's not that I want something dangerous, but it's that it doesn't scare me like it does other people. And I feel like I'm wasting my talent if I just, you know, we're delivering a hamburger today, not to downsize that. But I'm not afraid of a burning car. I'm not afraid of this and that. So long story short, we were talking in the car and I said, "What? we need a plan B because what happens if everything falls out and they find some way to take this truck from us at the end of the lease? We need a backup plan. And so we came up, started brainstorming that day. And hours later, we had this idea for a pink SUV that could do roadside and respond to motor, uh, motor club calls. And it just developed from there. And thank God that we did, because that was the only thing that saved our butt. Midwest uh, uh, Road Rescue, uh, located out mm -hmm. in uh, Kansas City, Missouri, if, if I'm right. Yeah, we're at a Lawrence, Lawrence, Kansas. We're right between uh, Topeka and Kansas City, and we serve the KC metro area all the way out to Topeka, and we've gone as far north as St. Joe and as far west as Manhattan. I'm just going to put it out there. It was, it was a lot easier for me to garner clients because, like I said, I, I worked up under uh, a national uh, road service company, and I was – Preview to all mm -hmm. of the all of the contacts that was contacting him, I kind of, mm -hmm. you know, kind of got them to start contacting me. <laughs> so how how was the uh, <laughs> how, how was the uh, how was the you know how was the road of getting contacts 
uh, to, you know, for you to set up because I mean, I'm not sure out there, you know, you probably might not have that much competition as, as we do here in, in Cleveland, Ohio, because almost everybody in mm-hmm. their mama is doing uh road service where I'm at. That's why the rates was. I don't need you to tell me how fucking good my coffee is. Okay. I'm the one who buys it. I know how good it is. When Bonnie goes shopping. She buys shit. I buy the gourmet expensive stuff because when I drink it, I want to taste it. But you know what's on my mind right now? It ain't the coffee in my kitchen. So cut. But what is it? What What's your competition and the road to get into contacts like out there? Well, I'll give you I'll give you a great one. And, and the listeners love, love need to take note of this because it, it saved my butt, too. And that's. As soon as you can, I mean, I would recommend getting in proper LLC forms, even if you're in trucking right now. And the reason I didn't recommend that in the past, but the reason I do now is our LLC has been around a while. This business has been around a while. So the moment we opened, we opened a doing business as account, a DBA through the bank underneath the LLC. So we were able to leverage the time in business that the LLC has existed. And suddenly we have six, seven years of experience. Um, as a company. And that secured us the accounts immediately. Whereas somebody just starting saying, hey, I just started yesterday. Most of these motor clubs are going to say, we can't work with you. You need to have at least a few years of experience here. Um, So we were able to leverage that. And um, thank God we did. That got us some major accounts, some major moving uh, company accounts. And we've got big accounts right now. I, I can imagine a couple of counts. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping uh, one of them is called a Jir, a Jiro, a Jir, I can't pronounce their name, but a Jir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they yep. <laughs> um, they they handle just about all of the cell phone accounts and everything. Those uh-huh. the, those the people that when somebody needs some fuel or somebody need a tire change or jump start, they get on their phone and. And and call through them and it, it's it's a juror. I can't a juror, a juro, a jure, a juro, a juro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I I know I know yeah, for a fact tremendous. that you should. There's a lot of them. Yeah, I know for a fact that that should be one of your major uh major accounts right there. Uh, so this is the first year. Well, it's not even a year, but this the you know going into your first year of doing this are you going to uh go to next year's uh baltimore tow show no oh, i wasn't even aware of that walkout i didn't even know they had these yes <laughs> yes they you're breaking this to me right now <laughs> yes it's uh it's the tow man uh look it up it's the tow man uh tow show espo they have one in Las Vegas, which probably be up your alley because you know you you look like you kind of a Las Vegas girl there. But they got one in Las Vegas. <laughs> the main the main one and the uh, the premier one is the one in Baltimore. Uh, that's the that's the premier uh, show. And then I think they have a mid. As a matter of fact, I do believe they have a Midwest show. Uh, I'm not sure if it's in Ohio or somewhere in your area but definitely when you get a chance uh google tow man uh tow show or this type in baltimore tow show and it'll bring it up uh i was able to go to the last three and we won uh actually we won two out of the three times as being one of the top providers for uh, road service so that was uh, that was a great accomplishment i think that was the last uh last one was before i got uh separated from my wife and i went on a yeah kind of went on a bender out there in in, in uh in baltimore <laughs> i can understand yeah no now that so. i know about this absolutely yeah, so our t- to give you kind of a time frame here, so we're we're strengthening our current office, which is in the KC area. We're co- focused on Northeast Kansas. This winter, we're we're already securing the insurance right now. We're doing all the quotes, but we're going to get into winching this winter, so we can pull people out of the ditches. And that's a big thing out here when it ices up, um, especially along the highways. So we're going to have two vehicles capable of doing that, and then next spring. 
we're hoping to get it at least one flatbed tow truck and start venturing into towing capture eight bad and then we're going to expand from kc we're going to go to wichita we're going to go to western kansas we're going to go into missouri and hopefully coast to coast start from small beginnings and then you expand that way stay stay small pay the bills and then when it becomes right <laughs> right start looking into uh into uh other outlets man so you exactly i was just gonna add too i the, the thing that's really important to me from my experience with the trucking company is that i never want that to happen to our people i don't ever want to get so big that we don't have an idea that our people are being treated like crap, you know? So we're, we're really focused on structuring this in such a way that there are checks and balances and quality control at every single department constantly. I want to make sure that nobody gets screwed over and every single road tech is shown how much they're appreciated. Brittany and pink, everybody. Okay. So I, I want to touch on a, on a post that you did because you, you still running, you, you still running your, your, uh, social media outlets before I touch on that post, how are they doing by the way? I mean, you're not in trucking anymore. <laughs> and, and we kind of know that majority of, of your audience was coming for the trucking content, but now that mm -hmm. you're not in trucking is, is, is your, uh, social media outlets is still strong. So yeah, as a matter of fact, I had a I hired a social media manager that has been helping me because I've been bombarded with calls and trying to manage this, try managing two companies and stuff. Um, but no, we just had a meeting yesterday, so we had an initial drop. As you pointed out, when you got to trucking, it's like talk about a, a content shift, right? Thankfully, towing and roadside is very similar. You know, we go through a lot of the same things and even more than a lot of truck drivers, we're standing on the shoulder all the time. And so we had the initial drop in viewership, but afterwards we've been steady climb ever since. And so I think we're coming back even stronger than we were in trucking. And now this time we own 100% of the LLC and we own 100% of roadside and we own 100% of Bree TV. I don't ever want to bring investors in and dilute my company. So the post that you made recently uh, shown a young man uh, changing a tire, looked like one of your employees uh, changing a tire. Mm -hmm. He was in the gear, you know, he, he was in the gear, full gear. Uh, he was in the, uh, in, in the truck, uh, you know, Midwest uh, road service, the big pink truck. Can't miss it. <laughs> Uh, but but as he was changing or he was about to change the tire on the RV, uh, he got approached by uh by by a cop. Uh, talk us, talk us through what happened with that little S change. <laughs> he did. This is another reason he he in particular doesn't like going to Kansas City, Missouri. Um, no, they've had a, a big wave. Apparently, we're told in crime in the area, people stealing catalytic converters and stealing tires, and basically, you know, within three minutes, shit's gone. And so he rolls up to to do a tire change in this uh, RV. This guy's wife was in the hospital having surgery. And so we came out to go help him out. You know, he's got enough stress. So he's on the scene and he's changing his tire. And the, this cop rolls up and he's like, hey, what are you doing? And of course, he's like, yeah, I'm just changing a tire. You know, nothing to see. <laughs> and the guy immediately asked for his ID, of course, and wanted to verify everything. Now, I will say... Our officer or our our officer, our road tech had a different perspective. I he I he wasn't imagine. really bothered by this. So he 
he kind of took it in stride personally. I mean, he was like, here, you can see my dispatch on scene. We can check the VIN number. Uh, here's my license. Here's my, you know. So, but it does raise a lot of questions. I've seen in the comments, like, should a cop just roll up and demand ID immediately? You know, how do you go about that? I read some of the comments and a couple of them, of course, is always is supportive. And a lot of them is like, you know, kind of not supportive. Uh, one particular comment was uh, was something to the effect of the cop was just doing his job. Why you posted the video? What, what would you like to say to that? <laughs> I, I have an easy explanation for that. And that's where reality t- this is stuff people encounter every day. And so I just want to bring everybody in. It's not targeted towards the cop or towards our, our people. It just shows you what we're just filming life, right? And um, we want people to discuss life. And I think it's important. A little incident like that kind of hit close to home. Um, I was uh, doing a, I actually was doing a lockout. She comes home from work in about an hour and a half graveyard shift at the hospital you gotta make some phone calls you gotta call some people well then do it and then get the fuck out of my house before she gets here i was doing a lockout uh you know the young lady was there uh with her baby you know i was there uh it was in a it was in a sketchy you know you know sketchy area you know Mm -hmm. and i understood Mm -hmm. you know i understood you know uh Cop got out of the car, uh, came over to me, asked me what I was doing. Uh, you know, I kind of looked at him and I said, you know, you know, I'm here doing a lockout. You know, she locked her keys in the car and, you know, car was nice. Don't get me wrong. You know, it was a nice little, nice, nice little car. He, you know, he thought we was breaking in the car. I mean, I'm, I'm all dressed up. I, I got my. <laughs> I got my PPE on. I got my 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 little flashers flashing, and 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 uh, you know the the signage on my car because you know some guys that does road service out there in Cleveland, their cars not marked. You know they come in, you know they come in mm-hmm. unmarked cars, and I I can understand that part too. Mm-hmm. But you know mine was marked. You know big black uh mm-hmm. big black Ford F one fifty. Uh, you know, sign sirens and everything, and you know, he asked me for my ID. He asked her for her ID. He asked her if the car was hers and all like that. And he asked her, "Are you okay?" And I'm, I'm standing there like, "Yo, what? Wait, what just happened?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, he's talking to her right. like, right? He, he's talking to her like I did something to her, and she was like, "No, like you know, she's the victim." Yeah. <laughs> So she was like, no, nah, I, you know, locked my keys in the car and he's here to unlock the car and all like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I, you know, the cop, you know, the cops come and unlock cars too. You know, I get, you know, the one mm-hmm. cop kind of, kind of side, you know, kind of side mumbled like, well, why you didn't call the, call the police and we could have came and got you in the car for free you know what i'm saying i'm like i mean you know not to say you know i I think he probably you know i thought he you know thought he was kind of like crushing on the girl but anyway uh he gave me my stuff back you know he was you know he was with me for a hot minute like you know he was in the car like like literally the back of my head i'm going like I mean, dude, really trying to put something on me. <laughs> so he comes, uh-huh. you know, he comes back and um, hand me my ID back. And, uh, you know, he, he says, um, he says, OK, you know, and then he goes into his little spiel about, well, you know, we had, you know, theft in the area, yada, 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 yada. And I'm like, OK, you know, going in one mm-hmm. ear and out the other. I'm like, well, can I go ahead and get in the car for her? You know, it was like, it was like, yeah, you know, go in and do your job, whatever. I got her in the car and, you know, we all went about our merry way. But yeah, I mean, I can imagine how, how your, how your service tip felt. Um, How did he feel uh, when, you know, he was, he was stopped? I mean, 
what what did he what what did he have to say about it? Okay, yeah, he took it in stride. Thought it was more humorous that you know, hey, they thought I was gonna steal the thing. I'm, you know, I've got a marked vest and marked unit, and um, personally, my perspective on it is you got to be careful not to have what do they call it a pretextual stop where you know you're just trying to find any excuse to ID the person and search and try to find, you know, some dirt on him to, to, you know, be able to make an arrest or whatever. But I think the guy, I think the officer, the only critique I would have is that I probably wouldn't have jumped to just asking for ID or demanding ID. I would have said, Hey, you know, what's going on? Tell me, you know, it, it would have been, he had enough to request information to show, you know, that he's not stealing it. That's reasonable. We're with this company. The unit's marked. Our dispatch has the marked unit on it, matches up with our vehicle on scene. And here's the RP's contact who's inside the hospital. That should have been enough for the officer. So while I'm not bashing him, you know, I think it's going a little far to start demanding ID and running everything and this and that when clearly there's no crime. Yeah, it's it's crazy. So your your service tech, uh, he he continued. Uh, did he did he finish the the job? Was he able to change the tire? He did. Yeah, the, a couple of other officers showed up. I think there were three in total. Um, and then they finished running his stuff and cut him loose. Um, I will say this: one of the other officers later on did swing by and tossed him a bottle of water, which I thought was nice because. Just during that heat. So, you know, they weren't terrible to him. It's just, you know, you could, I guess the biggest thing is, is it, is it right to jump to ID somebody? You know, that's a big debate right now. Don't get me wrong. I, you know, like I said, I, I can understand the, the cop quote unquote doing his job. But I mean, if you, if you see the service tech there in a marked vehicle, you know, PPE on and everything else. I mean, I, you know, common sense, you know, would have just said, hey, you know, he's there to, you know, change somebody's tire, you know, I, and not to jump out. But but then again, like I said, I, I can understand, you know, if it was a lot of uh, theft, a lot of issues in that area, and he just want to make sure that the mm -hmm. you know that the guy changing the tire is who he said so i i get it you know i i get it i understand it i mean you know the old me the old me would have probably you know probably be no nah, man i ain't giving you my license I'm, you, I'm over here working get out my face type deal that that would have been the old me but the new me like here bruh why you doing why you doing this and that uh, let me go ahead and finish changing this because i got a lot more calls to get to bro <laughs> right <laughs> yeah definitely all right all right britney in pink brie tv on youtube midwest <laughs> road service in kansas city missouri i mean you you just uh you you just all over the place you're not you're not stopping i mean i've I, 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 I am I'm glad stopping. I am glad for you, man. I mean, you know, and you just your 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 energy, your your attitude towards everything has has never faltered, has never changed. You're you're just as energetic now as you was as you was then uh with with all the issues that was going on. So I do applaud you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Big cheese got it locked. Boy. What you want, y'all?